well good let's see it's now afternoon good afternoon everyone it's 1203 i always like to make sure i'm technically correct that's the best kind of correct uh andrew kircher here from port huron museums outside of port huron museums today uh with uh what i think will be a pretty cool little anniversary post for an event that uh some folks may have heard of uh but a kind of cool story i thought about you know, turning this into a long text post today, but then I said, you know what? It is such a nice day outside that uh, instead of a, a text post, I would walk outside and just show you guys in person. I'm here on the grounds of the museum. We can see the camera cabin back here uh, behind me. Hopefully, I know a lot of people might be stuck in an office. I have been all morning, but it's been some beautiful days the last couple days. So hopefully you get a chance uh, to get out and enjoy those, even if it is uh, after work. But now, before we get to our story today, I want to talk a little bit about a couple of upcoming events we have. We've got uh, Field Day at the Lighthouse in June, which is going to be like an old-fashioned field day just like you had at school. Uh, we also have a scavenger hunt uh, coming up uh, that you can get tickets for, which is actually a really fun way to visit all of our sites for just ten dollars and get to be in like a fun scavenger hunt there's prizes you can win how fun and exciting would that be but uh the next event we have coming up actually really quickly is going to be our dinner for the fallen heroes banner project so if you're not familiar with that uh local historian a guy by the name of ed weissler who works with the american legion post eight he's a uh, veteran himself great guy he's been doing this amazing project over the last couple of years collecting pictures of every single serviceman uh, who, from St. Clair County uh, who died in service to their country, uh, going all the way back to uh, World War I. So finding those pictures, getting them printed up on banners that will be going up in communities all over St. Clair County uh, for the week before and after Memorial Day. So uh, it's a really cool project. You can find out some more about it. Uh, and uh, come out, support us. We've got a fundraiser dinner on the 25th. Uh, tickets are, I think, $30, but that's uh, like dinner and a show. So you get to come into the museum. Uh, you get uh, a presentation from Ed. Uh, hopefully we're going to have some special guests with uh, some old uh, military vehicles. I think I will be there uh, in some older military kit to talk a little bit about uh, what uh, soldiers uh, wore, some of the equipment they were issued. We've got some Rosie the Riveters coming in. It should be a really fun time. We've got a limited number of tickets to that. So if you're interested in that, uh, it's on the 25th. It's a Tuesday. Great way to see the museum and support what I think no one could argue is a really, really cool cause. So that's how we're paying to get some of these banners uh, printed for future use. So hopefully you'll be able to join us for that. But on with uh, the whole point of our show this evening. I'm out here in front of the museum, the Carnegie Center, and panning over and looking at some of our maritime artifacts here on the South Lawn. And I want to talk about the, the schooner Shoop, uh, which uh, May 17th, May 18th, right, uh, between those two days, it's one of those stories that takes place over a couple of days, uh, in 1894 was in a storm in this area. So we know that May can be kind of unpredictable. I was actually looking at my own Facebook memories. It was two years ago that there was like a little tornado watch or tornado warning uh, for the area. So they can happen in May is a scary time uh, for them. Some big storms can pop up. And that is what happened back in 1894. There were 50 mile an hour winds. Eight ships actually got wrecked in this storm. And Port Huron set what might still be a record. I gotta find out a little bit more, but they received 2.94 inches of rain in less than 24 hours. So that is a lot of rain to hit in the area. Uh, Olin Brooks, we all know the uh, flower people uh, who are still in business. They had a greenhouse on Lapeer, just like we you know, know they do today. It was actually completely ruined by this storm because there was hail, and uh, hail they reported as being two-thirds the size of a baseball. So that's hail that isn't kidding around. Uh, so I can see how that would ruin a greenhouse for sure. So one of the ships that was out in this storm was the William Shoop or Schupa. Uh, I'm not sure how German they are, but um, it was captained by a guy named Nelson Little, uh, who was from Port Huron, and they were coming from Alpena. They had a cargo of lumber. They had a crew of eight men and a woman on board who was the cook, which, uh, you know what they say about women on board a ship, that, uh, you know, can be unlucky. And I guess I, it's hard saying, it's kind of a superstition, but uh, the men of this schooner were not 
particularly lucky so it, it, it plays out in that day so this storm um, they wind up getting pushed onto shore or pushed onto the Corsica Shoal this is the same shoal that was marked by the Huron lightship so just about two three miles north of uh, the Blue Water Bridge and uh, Captain A.A. A. A. Cox of the Tug Thompson tried to go out five separate times to reach the ship which had started to flounder, flip onto its side, and save that crew. But the Thompson couldn't make it. It was being battered back in. That's how ferocious this storm was. I think we've all probably been around for one of those storms that you'd never want to be out on the lake for. So it, it got battered in. Of course, again, the Corsica Shoals were looking at like a mile, mile and a half offshore. And uh, they knew the crew on board was in danger. So they actually rounded up uh, five men. Very, very brave men. John Little, Dan Lynn, Barney Mills, Augustus King, and William Lewis. And what their plan was, they were going to take a small boat out from the shore. Instead of trying to get to it from the lakeside like the tug was, they were going to take like a little rowboat out and uh, try and get to the men. And actually, they were able to make it. And, and uh, John Little was nephew of the captain, Nelson Little. So they were related. So you can, you can imagine trying to save a family member out on the lake. And it's so beautiful out today. It's hard to imagine that kind of storm. But I think we've all been there, seen one of these come up real quick. And especially back in 1894, they didn't have any Doppler radar or anything like that to uh, let them know it was coming their way. So they make it out there. Um, to the ship and they begin tying up to try and uh, get some of the survivors from uh, the shoop onto their little lifeboat when an enormous wave comes over they said the boat was flipped about 20 feet into the air the little boat and the five rescuers now needed to be rescued themselves they were all knocked into the water now at this time while they're watching this some of the hail had come and gone so there are actually about a thousand people out on the beach watching this you know human drama uh, going on uh, real scary stuff for sure and as the men kind of bounced around uh, unfortunately two more men tied uh, lifelines to themselves and started to wade out the guys didn't have life jackets on so uh, they were actually only able to rescue Dan Lynn of those five men who so bravely went out uh, and he had gone unconscious they pulled him out of water just in the right time he was treated for exhaustion but survived the other men did not make it so that's pretty scary stuff. But then you have, again, there's still the eight people on the shoop. Um, and those men on uh, the shoop, um, they were going to get help from the men at the Harbor Beach Life Saving Station. So one of the things that's um, easy to forget or confuse is there's the lighthouse service, there's the Coast Guard, there's the revenue cutters. All of these things would eventually fall under the Coast Guard, right? But in 1894... You had the lighthouse service, but guys in the lighthouse, even if they saw a shipwreck, absolutely could not go save people. Their first mission was to tend to the light to make sure other people could uh, get in uh, to that area uh, where the light ship was, you know, beckoning them on to uh, a safe harbor. Uh, so that's why they established the life saving service. Now, there wasn't actually a life saving service station in Port Huron at the time. The next one was up in Harbor Beach. And they ran a special train on the Flint and Pear Marquette Railroad. They were able to load all of their supplies, load a boat, get down here all the way from Harbor Beach in just four hours, which is pretty impressive. And they brought with them a Lyle gun. I wish I had a Lyle gun here to show you. There's one at the uh, lighthouse, but uh, I'll get to this artifact that I've been showing you guys um, in uh, just a second. I thought about, well, do I film this at the lighthouse? Do I film this here? I wanted to film this here because I wanted to talk about this. So. Um, they get here with a Lyle gun. It's like a little cannon. You might be thinking, why are they bringing a cannon to help people? Well, it's a line throwing gun. So they actually shoot a lead weight. It's attached to a line. It goes, flies out, and drops a line over the people you're trying to rescue. And then you've got a rope out to them. You can get them life preservers. You can pull them in, that sort of thing. And they were able to rescue the men of the uh, William Shoop, apparently just minutes before the entire ship was battered to pieces. And this is actually the biggest piece left. So this piece washed up in the 1950s onto the beach. So this is the rudder to that ship um, that those eight people were saved from and those four men uh, were killed attempting uh, to save them. And they were actually the impetus. They said, all right, we need to build a life-saving station in Port Huron so we don't have to wait four hours uh, to get this kind of help uh, here. So this was uh, finally washed up on shore in the 1950s. You see, this is a not insubstantial piece of wood here. This is pretty large. Um, so 
Uh, they did build by 1898. They built a life-saving station, and I have a picture of it because this is a building I'd love to show you, but it doesn't exist anymore. This is the life-saving station that they built up at kind of the end of Metcalf Road, uh, right by Corsica Schultz. So uh, north of town, a little ways, oops, get this level. Um, sorry, I'm not good at doing this with both hands, but um, they built this life-saving station. And actually, uh, eight or nine more would be built with this exact same pattern across the country. They called this the Port Huron style. Uh, and you can see it's kind of like a house with a lighthouse built into it. Uh, and that was a tower so they could watch for shipwrecks. So by 1915, however, uh, by 1915, they had amalgamated the life-saving service uh, and the revenue cutter service and turned all of it into what we now know as the Coast Guard. So there's kind of a long story about one of those pieces you may have seen out on the uh, museum grounds. I would love to get a sign telling that story because there really isn't one. Unfortunately, we'd be looking at like five, six hundred bucks. And I know there's quite a few things that would maybe come a little higher on our priority list right now, but maybe someday, right? Or, you know, if you found that story compelling, you really want to help us out, let me know, because I'd love to write up a little sign for that so people walking by could know about uh, that uh, pretty cool artifact. So, that we have in the collection. I'm going to take this right off my little stand here. So, hopefully you enjoyed... Uh, we didn't go very far. I didn't go very far anyway, because my office is right here at the museum. But it's a beautiful day outside. I wanted to take a couple seconds, get a little bit of fresh air, enjoy some of the sun, and tell you what I thought was a really cool story about the area. That life-saving station, by the way, it stayed up there until 1932 when they built the new Coast Guard station at the grounds of the lighthouse. That's the big white building that we're actually working on renovating right now with friends of the Fort Gratiot Lighthouse. Of course, our partners with St. Clair County Parks and Recreation uh, who uh, also maintain the site there at Fort Gratiot Light Station. So a really neat local story that we have an artifact to tell it with. Thinking about those those brave guys who died trying to help others. I think that's a pretty universal human story that uh, anyone could appreciate of just about any time. Uh, it takes a lot of bravery to go out into that kind of surf to try and help others. So I think that stands as kind of a pretty neat memorial for those guys um, and the brave act that they did. Anyway, so there's uh, our story for the day. I told you about some of our upcoming events at the very beginning. If you missed that, again, we've got, you want to talk about bravery, uh, we are working with We are having a dinner, a fundraiser for the uh, Fallen Heroes Banner Project. Uh, so this is a project to memorialize all of the men who made the ultimate sacrifice for their country with some banners from St. Clair County. There's a few hundred of them, sad to say, uh, but we don't want them to be forgotten. And there are going to be banners put up all across the county in tons of municipalities. And if you think that sounds like a cool idea... Uh, you can let everyone know what a cool idea that you think that is by picking up a ticket to come to that event, which is on Tuesday the 25th. $30 tickets that get you into the museum, that gets you your dinner, and of course that's making like a sizable donation to the banners. So it should be a good dinner. There's going to be a fun time. You'll be able to learn more about the project, see some of the banners in person, and we've got some special events planned for you that night. So limited tickets, pick one up today.